Yes, I must say that you can use your employer reference now to prove your English language proficiency as an international nurse or midwife. Today, we are looking at the breakdown of the UKNMC's new English language proficiency requirements. Remember that the UKNMC has implemented their new English language proficiency requirements for international nurses and midwives willing to join their register. If you can watch this video to the end, you realize that you can capitalize on the IELTS or OET resource you have at your disposal to commence your dream of becoming a nurse or midwife in the UK. My name is Setak Majma, you can simply call me Kobe. If this is your first time seeing my channel, I officially welcome you here. I hope you will subscribe to this channel, like and then share this video to as many people as you can so that they benefit from it as well. So one important thing here is that I have a couple of IELTS and OET results that have been sent to me by friends to analyze whether they meet up to the UKNMC's new English language proficiency requirement. So in as much as breaking into details, the changes that have transpired, I will be giving some examples. I will be using the results people have sent me to probably let you understand how the whole thing goes. So I believe this video will give you much, much value and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Under the new changes, you will need to achieve the following scores in the IELTS to be able to register with the UK NMC. The reading score should be at least 7, which means that any score from band 7 to band 9 is well accepted by the UK NMC. The listening score should be at least 7. Like the reading test, you should endeavor to have a band score from 7 to 9. That is really accepted by the UK NMC. And then talking about the writing test, you need a score of 6.5 to 9. So at least 6.5 band score is acceptable by the UK NMC. And then just to let you know, probably it will be a bit difficult for somebody to have a band 9 in the writing test. It's not really possible, okay? But probably having at least 6.5 to 9 is acceptable by the UK NMC. So if not for anything, 6.5 or 7.0, 7.5 can go a long way to help you to register with the UK NMC. And then with the speaking test, the same applies to the listening and the reading test. Possibly you should have a band score of at least 7. So what this means is that you should have from band 7 to band 9. Remember, your overall band score is also an important factor to consider here. You need at least an overall band score of 7 out of 9 after striking the average of the four tests to be able to register with the UK NMC. So from band 7 to probably band 9 for the average will go a long way to help you and for those who are interested in writing the OET what happens here is that you need a grade of at least P in the speaking listening and then the reading test to be able to achieve this target now what happens here is that you should be scoring a max of 350 I mean from 350 to 440 out of 500 marks to be able to achieve at least grade B for the aforementioned models and then talking of the writing test, you need a grade of at least C+, you know, which represents a score of 300 to 340 in order to meet the UK NMC's English language proficiency criteria. Unlike the IELTS, remember there is no overall grade for the OET. This to say that as for the new changes, the UK NMC didn't either reduce or increase the IELTS and the OET score. They are the same as before. So with this in mind, if you are writing IELTS or OET for the first time, probably with the hope of registering with the UK NMC, it behoves on you to keep an eye on the scores I mentioned earlier. So at the end of the day, you are able to go through the process successfully. So the criteria for combining two IELTS or two OT results have changed. What this means is that it is now much more comfortable and flexible to combine than before. There are one or two stats that have changed and I'm going to talk about it in this video. So we're going to compare the previous changes to the current change so that we probably be able to appreciate it much more. So the first criteria they tackled was much more of the fact that they had to increase the duration for which one can combine two IELTS or two OET results. So previously it was six months, now it has been extended to 12 months. What this means is that probably if you have two IELTS or two OET results written within 12 months of each other, you can combine them provided the other criteria are met. So in actual sense, the UKNMC added six more months and I think they deserve some applause. So let's say you wrote your first IELTS in September 2022, okay, and couldn't achieve the UKNMC's required score. From this time to September 2023, which is 12 months duration, 
if you should resist the test and not meet the required score. Probably you can put together these two results to do your UKNMC registration, provided they meet the other requirements, which we'll be talking about in a minute. And the second criteria here is the same as before. Apparently, if you did all the four sessions for both art and OET, probably which includes the listening, reading, writing, and then speaking at the same time, then you can combine the two results. But here, the emphasis is still on the fact that the other criteria should be met. So now with the third criteria, there was a bit of change as compared to the previous one. And then we'll look at that in a minute. So looking at the IELTS, it says that if the scores you had in either of the two IELTS settings are not below 6.5 for the listening, reading and the speaking, and for the writing, probably if it's not below 6, then you qualify to combine the results. Then that is if the other criteria are met. And for two OET settings, the score in either test should not be below grade C we C plus for the listening, speaking, and then reading, and then we C for the writing. So now with this criteria, there was a bit of change on the writing test, you know, looking at the IELTS, it was reduced from 6.5 to 6.0. And for the OET, it was reduced from C plus to C. Okay, so there's a bit of change that did happen in this aspect. So if you meet this criteria together with the other criteria I've talked about, then those I'll be talking about, then you can confidently put these two results together to meet up to what the UKNMC is looking out for. And then you can start your UKNMC registration. So get these course in two IELTS settings and then two OET settings and you can combine them to meet the UKNMC's English language proficiency requirements. And for the fourth criteria, apparently it's not different from the previous one, okay? But, you know, let me just let you know what it is. In as much as we are looking at the minimum scores to be able to combine the two IELTS or two OET results. The UKNMC has said that apparently you should endeavor to achieve at least a band score of 7 for the reading, listening and the speaking, okay? And at least 6.5 for the writing in at least one of the two test settings. So the concept of combining is that probably whatever subject or whatever section you failed should have a replacement in the second setting or whatever session you feel in the second setting you have a replacement from the first setting so that is basically the concept of combining and for the oet you should get in at least one of the two test settings at least a grade of b for the reading listening and the speaking and for the writing at least a grade of c plus so there is no different from the previous one it's the same thing that's not changed with this criteria what it means is that every field section of the test should have a replacement so let's look at an example of it so let's say you took the IELTS and then had a score in your first setting 6.5 in the listening test, 7.0 in the reading test, 6.5 in the writing test, and then 6.5 in the speaking. And in the second setting, you achieved the following score 7.0 in the listening test, 6.5 in the reading test, 6.0 in the writing test, and then 7.5 in the speaking test. Now, taking a close look at the two results, it can be confidently stated that because of the scores for the listening and then the speaking test, which is 6.5 in the first setting, this individual did not meet the UKNMC's English language requirement. And then see, I wanted to analyze the results for the second setting. What actually went wrong? Do you think this person has fallen off the required score for the reading and the writing test? Yes, at least 7 for the reading test and at least 6.5 in the writing would have made the results so perfect for the UKNMC's registration. But unfortunately, it is not. Hence, the need to combine the two test settings to meet up to the UKNMC's English language proficiency requirement. So at this juncture, what we are going to do is that we are going to see if the field session in each setting has a replacement. This is the essence of combining two IELTS results. Okay, so let's look at that. So taking a close look at the two results, what happens is that the listening in the first setting comes with a score of 6.5 which is below what the EKNMC is looking for. However, that of the second setting is band 7. It meets the score the EKNMC is looking for. So in place of this 6.5, we can put 7.0. Okay, so probably we know with this, the listening test has been sorted. Moving on, comparing the reading score, the 7.0 in the first setting will replace the 6.5 in the second setting, you know. And when you consider the writing test, probably the score in the first setting is okay, 6.5. But that of the second setting falls outside the EKNMC's requirement. So with this, the 6.5 will replace the 6.0. So we get 
So we can confidently say that the writing test has also been sorted as well as the reading score. Okay, so let's move on. Looking at the two speaking scores, the 7.5 for the second sitting meets the UKNMC's demarcated score. So let's put the 7.5. Now, should we put all together? This is what we get. And you can testify that these results now meet up to the UKNMC's English proficiency requirement. See, if you still find it difficult to tell whether the two IELTS or 280 results you have is clubbable, you don't have to worry that much. The UKNMC has introduced a new system called a Test Combining Calculator. So this can help you probably analyze your results to see if you qualify to combine or not. I'll talk more about the Test Combining Calculator in my next video. So if you've not subscribed to this channel yet, please hit the subscribe button and then become part of the family. Also make sure that you are clicking on the notification but that's more about close to the subscribe button so that anytime I upload a new video, you will quickly be notified. The use of supporting information as a proof of your English language proficiency. This is what I'm going to dive into. This topic has become a matter of concern to many people because you know, it's like it's still not clear to some international nurses who are they to work in the UK. You know, I'm going to take you through every bit and pieces of it and it's part of the changes that it happened. And there are some exceptions too. So I would want you to listen attentively and then you'll be able to decide as to whether you're able to use your employer reference as a proof of your English language proficiency or not. Now, before I start diving into it, I've got some questions from people and you know, it has to do with the fact that is the use of the supporting information like employer reference approved by the EKNMC? And you know, they keep asking, if it's approved by the UKNMC, how do you go about it? Probably, where do you get the employer reference from for our employers to start filling? These are some of the questions people have never ceased asking me. And the good news is that apparently I've got answers to them here. Yes, I must say that you can use your employer reference now to prove your English language proficiency as an international nurse or midwife. But there are some exceptions, okay? And you know, I would want to talk about them in brief so that at the end of the day, it helps you to decide as to whether you are fit for the employer reference or you have to sit for the IELTS and the OET. So let's look at them. Now, according to the UKNMC, to be able to use your supporting information, you should be able to meet three basic criteria. So I'm going to outline these criteria so that on the day you can probably analyze yourself and say, okay, based on this, I think I qualify to use the employer reference. So now if after hearing the criteria, you analyze and then you realize that you can use your employer reference, then you don't have to write out to OET. This is what the EKNMC has said. And for me, I think it's good news. But as I said, there are some exceptions. Okay, so what I want you to do is that just listen to whatever I'm going to tell you. Sit back and then analyze. Ask yourself, do I fall in all these three categories? If your answer is yes, then probably you should you should not strike any friendship with IELTS or OET because you don't need them. So the first criteria they are looking out for here is very simple. Now, what the UKNMC have said is that to be able to use your employer reference to prove your English language proficiency, you should be trained in English in a country where English is not a majority spoken language. Okay, so if you are coming from a country where English is not a majority spoken language, then that is the first criteria you are meeting, which means that you stand a chance of using your employer reference. And with the second criteria, what the UKNMC has said is that, you know, you should be you should have been working for at least one year in an unregulated health and social care setting in the UK. So the emphasis is in the UK. So apparently, if you are into this role and you are outside the UK, you don't qualify. Now, the general impression here is that this is not for international nurses who are back home, who are in their home countries, and then are willing to come to the UK to practice as nurses or midwives. So for you, you don't really qualify for the employer reference because you are looking now for international nurses who have moved from their home country to the UK and are into the senior care jobs, are into healthcare assistant jobs and all of that. You know, this category of people are not regulated by any regulatory body, okay? And if you fall in this category and you have worked in the UK for at least one year, you qualify to use your employer reference, okay? So that is it. And then the third criteria I'll talk about here is for the fact that you should be able to provide evidence, okay? What are you providing evidence for? You should provide evidence that your training and assessment was in English. So if you meet all these criteria, then you are free to use the employer reference. But there's a question. You may be asking, what if I meet all these three requirements? What do I do? Where do I start from? Where do I even get the employer reference form to give to my employer to sign or to fill? 
Well, there's not much of a header. I mean, you don't have to worry about it because the EKNMC has got that sorted. Okay, so let's look at how to go about it once you meet all these criteria. Now, if you are watching me and then you meet all these criteria, I should say a big, big congratulations to you. Okay, um, do you know why? You know, it's because you and IELTS or OET have no friendship at the moment. Okay, so that's the good news at the moment if you qualify for the employer reference. Now, to answer the question, what do I do if I meet all these criteria? I mean, is there a reference form I have to send to my employer to fill? I'm going to answer this question in brief. You know, this is what the EKNMC has said about this. And I think it's fair at the moment because, you know, you are not to stretch yourself. You are not to take any steps to your employer at the moment. But, I mean, let's listen to what the EKNMC has said and maybe you get a better understanding of it. So, the EKNMC has said that, if you are an applicant, okay, and you think you're eligible to use supporting information from your employer, what happens here is that probably you have to continue to apply the normal way, okay, and the UKNMC will be in touch to request for further information. So don't worry yourself about proving your English language proficiency. Just start with the UKNMC application. Just start with the registration. And then when you get to the point where you have to prove your English language proficiency, the UKNMC will reach back to you and then probably demand for further information from you. So I think that is the point where I mean, your employer will come in to say, okay, you have worked for at least one year. Probably you were trained and assessed in English and all those criteria, okay, just for them to confirm. So that at the end of the day, you can confidently use the employer reference. So what I must say is that you don't have to stress yourself. If you meet all these criteria, just start your EKNMC application. Just start with the registration, okay? And at a point, the EKNMC will reach back to you to demand for further information. However, you know, the EKNMC is actually making some changes. And what they said is that over the next few months, you see, when you start with your NMC application, what happens is that you may not be getting any option as to whether you are using a player reference or whatever at the moment. But in the next few months, what they said is that they will be making changes to their system to automate this aspect of the application process. Okay, so probably in the next two or three months or one month, you get on there, it's like you have the option of as to whether you want to use your supporting information or not okay so i mean that is it so with this i mean applicants will be able to tell the nmc that they want to use their supporting information as part of their online application process and then one good thing is that you know line managers and then counter signatories or whoever will be choosing as somebody to reference you um will also provide their supporting information through the nmc online so i think this is going to be an easy procedure that all you have to do is just probably let your employer know or your line manager know that this situation on board, you'll be able to log on to the UKNMC's portal and probably, I mean, confirm the employer reference. And then that is it. Okay. So probably in the course of my delivery, you never heard me mention for the fact that people who have missed a score, probably in the IELTS by 0.5 or half a bridge in the OET, can also use their supporting information. Well, I'm going to read what the UKNMC has said about this and probably if you are in this category, you know what step to take at the moment. So according to the UKNMC, this is changes still to come. And I'm going to read for you to understand whatever they've said at the moment. Later this year, we begin accepting supporting information from employers for people who have missed the required score by 0.5 for the IELTS or have a grade for the OET on one of the four language domains, as long as they have used at least a test combining options. So what this means is that this is not in full force at the moment. So if you fall in this category, then you have to wait until it is implemented. I mean, sorry about that, but that's what the EKNMC have said at the moment. So if you've got a score that you are missing 0.5 in one of the models in the IELTS, or you are missing half a grade in one of the models in the OET, you can't use your employer reference or your supporting information at the moment. So you have to wait for the EKNMC to probably make their technical changes and once this is implemented, you can also benefit from it. I hope you have had value watching this video. You know, thank you very much for watching this video. Once again, my name is Setak Majumai and you know, you can simply call me Kobe. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please click on the subscribe button and also like and share this video. Thank you. Hope to see you in my next video. Bye.